Hey guys and welcome back to another Vimer Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create something in which you have to double tap a button in order to do something else. So you could have to double tap W to run, which is what we're doing in this example, or double tap E to interact, or F turns on your flashlight, double tap F turns off the flashlight, anything along those lines. But in this, you're going to have to double tap to do something else. So without further ado, let me get in and show you what this is going to look like. So let me just switch characters from a previous tutorial. I'm now here controlling this character, I'm walking, if I double tap W, we're now running. So there's something similar that you've seen in Minecraft, so we're walking, double tap W, we're running, we let go, we're now walking again. So this is what we're going to make today, we have to double tap a button in order to do something else. Very simple, quite a nice little mechanic that some games have though. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, or the blueprint in which you want this code to be in. So for me, I'm doing run code, so I want to be in my character blueprint. If you want to do some interact code, so pick something up, do it in that object or what you want to interact with. If you want more specific help with setting up for what you specifically want, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to help you out with it. So like I say, I'm going to open up my character blueprint here. In here, I'm just going to find some empty space and get the keyboard event which I want to use. So I want to use W, as I want to double tap W to run. So if I right click and get a W keyboard event, again, get whatever you want to use. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to hit the plus variable here to create a new variable, naming this one pressed amount, or press amount, anything like that, and I'm going to change it to be an integer so it's a numerical value, compile, and leave the default value at zero. What we're going to do then is drag and drop this in, and we're going to get pressed amount there. Out of this, we're going to get an addition, so an increment integer, and that will go into the pressed like so, and what this does is it just adds one to our current pressed amount value. So this is the exact same as press amount plus an integer, setting that as one, but it just keeps it in here looking nice and neat and tidy like so. Out of this, I'm going to get a clamp integer, the minimum of zero and maximum of two. You don't really need to do this, but it's just nice to keep it more efficient as well. So the value doesn't go up above two because we only want to double tap it. If you want to do more, so you have to press it three times, then set that. Or if you don't really want a limit, you don't need the clamp. And then we're going to drag the press amount in and set press amount there connecting the execution into the increment integer there and a return value from the clamp into the return value of the set there the input value sorry so now whenever we press w we're going to be adding one to our press amount value up to a maximum of two so now we want to do something with this so what we're going to do is hold down s and left click to get a sequence connecting that to the set press amount there out of then one we want to see how many times we've pressed the button so i'm going to hold down b and left click to get a branch connecting that to then zero and the condition is going to be get pressed amount, so drag and drop get, and out of this we're going to get an equal equal. So an integer is equal to an integer, the bottom integer is going to be 2, because I want to press the button 2 times. And that will go into the condition there. Obviously if you want it to be 3 times, change that to be 3, just customise that to get it perfect for you. So then if we have pressed it 2 times, we then want to do the code. So here you're going to do the code you want, for example it could be picking something up, but for me I want it to be running. So I'm going to get the character movement here, drag out of this and set max walk speed, like so, connecting that into the true of the branch, and I'm going to set my running speed to be 800, let's say. But again, if you want to do anything else, you put that code off of true here. False doesn't need to go into anything, because essentially, when we press W once, this will come out false and do nothing. When we press it again for a second time, it's then going to start sprinting, because that will equal to 2, so it's going to start sprinting. So this will technically work, However, there's no duration for how long we need to do it. So if we press W once, and then a minute later we press it again, that will still fire this off. Obviously we don't want to do that though. We want you to have to do it quickly. So it's a double tap, not a tap, wait, tap. So to reset it, what we're gonna do is just come out of then one of the sequence and get a re-triggerable delay with a duration at 0.5. The duration is essentially to how long you want it to be active for. So you can set it to one second, meaning the player has one second to double tap. Customize that for what you want as well. And out completed, we're going to simply just set the pressed amount to zero. And the reason we're using a retriggerable delay and not just a normal delay is because if we press W once, it will go into this, wait half a second, set it to zero. If we press it once, this gets 0.3 seconds in and we press it again, this will reset to 0.5, which is obviously perfect because that way the player can actually double tap it and have enough time without it breaking or glitching out, anything like that. And now this is the code done. But because this is sprinting for me, what I'm going to do is off of released, I'm just going to set the movement speed back to normal. So character movement, set max walk speed, 
off of released and I'm going to set this to be 150 I believe I have it in this project again that's just because I'm doing sprinting but this is the code done so it's very simple what I've done is when we press our button we're going to add one to our pressed amount and then check to see what that is if it's equal to two then we'll do the code if it's not equal to two so it's the first time we pressed it we won't do anything and after we press it 0.5 seconds later if we don't press it again it will be reset back to zero so there is a timer on how quickly we need to actually double tap this as well so if we compile hit save and we can also hit place to test this out again if i just switch characters quickly here we're walking so i'm pressing w we're walking i press w wait a second press w again nothing happens but if i double tap w then we're going to be running like so and that works perfectly so again you have to be quick about it you can't wait too long as it won't work but if you do it within half a second or however quick you set it to be it will work perfectly for you so i think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we want to do we've set up this code in which we can double tap a button to do anything we want and in my example it is running so again this could be anything for you so turning on or off a flashlight sprinting picking up an object interacting open the door anything along those lines and again i'll be happy to help in the comments down below if you need more specific help so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one